Super Bowl 58 Sunday. My name is Scott Morganroth of Motor City Madmouth. I don't come on Sundays very often, but when the situation presents itself, whether I'm doing professor and the pupil or an occasional fire up show, I don't miss opportunities when they're when they present themselves. With that said, I'm going to go over every, give everybody an overview of what we're going to talk about today, and then introduce the crew. We're just going to get simply give you a lot of interesting Super Bowl facts that you may or may not have heard of for sure. So, you know what? Get your pen and papers out. If you don't want to do that, listen to it off as often as you want, and then we will go from there. So, with that said, this show is going to be loaded with facts. Nothing else more to say, and we welcome your input in the chat room as well. And we're assigning Candy Ebling to go out there and read everything in the chat. So. With that said, I want to welcome Candy Evelyn to the show. She normally does it on, does it on Sunday with Jeremy, but she's got company today. Welcome to the Super Bowl edition, Candy. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for being the host today, the hostess with the mostest today. Well, well, my pleasure. You know, I've covered four Super Bowls in person and been to four games and been a part of eight of them. So, you know, to me, it's been pretty neat. I think, yeah, actually eight of them, but I am looking forward to going back next year in New Orleans. I'm chopping at the bit to get out there, and that's what the plan is. All right, with that said, my partner on a lot of different shows, Jacob Christner. Happy Sunday, Jacob. Thank you very much, and I can say this. I think after all this time, this is my first fire up, so that's kind of cool. Well, you know, the one thing that's vitally important in this show is you got to be able to go out there and be versatile, and welcome to the Versatile Club. I know you're always on the Sports Exchange with me. We do Pundits Pundit, and we're outside plug in. Jeremy Bulrick has certainly gotten a taste of what versatility right is like. Right, Jeremy? Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> oh, all right, go out there and give me the okay. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know how else to res respond. You know, I just, I just been blessed. There you go. It's okay. Sunday, it's always good to be blessed, but on Sunday, you better be blessed because, you know, there's a higher authority that's going to make sure that, wants to make sure that we're all blessed if we're doing the right thing. And everybody it's, can learn. It's, go better ahead. To be, it's better to be blessed than cursed. Yeah, well, I'm not touching that one if you're in the Detroit area. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you don't get many no comments, but Candy found a way to drum one out of me this time. And I think for everybody watching, listening, all over the planet here. You all understand no comments are rare for me. All right. With that said, I promise you all a lot of facts, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And we'll start with the Michigan Wolverines, who have had the most players play in the Super Bowl with 130. With that said, I also want to point out that Chad Henney played as a backup quarterback to Patrick Mahomes. And if that isn't good enough, Tom Brady's only won six of these games. So, but that said, okay, and you never know if we might see Dylan McCaffrey, who's a related to Christian McCaffrey at a later date. And all Dylan McCaffrey was is lead Michigan to the national title. With that said, Candy, some, some thoughts about those. I think it's interesting. I think it's really interesting that um, Michigan's had 130. It'd be interesting to go through some of the other colleges, but I don't have those stats right here. But I'll give you stats later on during the program, so wait for those. Yeah, I know you'll have a lot of good ones. We talked about that when we ate lunch today. All right, Jacob? Well, you brought up Chad Henney, and I mean, he is a perfect thing for this subject. I, the first thing I think about is when I say – Coach matters every time. Scheme matters every time. Remember when Patrick Mahomes went out? Here comes Chad Hay with about, what, 92-yard drive. He has, it starts about the eighth touchdown right down the field, and then they bring um, Mahomes back in. And it's like it just shows completely scheme, everything. Something like that, you had a backup right there. And it just shows the difference between some you know teams, players, coach, everything. It all has to mesh. Jeremy? Well, 130 players. It doesn't say 130 individuals. So 10 of those are Tom Brady and three of them are Chad Henney. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that, let's not forget that the only national championship his earning 
ring his senior year and Super Bowl earning a ring as a backup his rookie year is Brian Greasy. Well, we'll be talking to Brian Greasy in a moment. In fact, we're going to talk about him now. Okay, let's talk about a very interesting number here. The Denver Broncos. Here's a common theme between the Broncos and the 49ers. The Broncos had Mike Shanahan win a Super Bowl. Ed McCaffrey, wide receiver, in the Super Bowl as well. Ryan Greasy and Anthony Lynn. We'll talk about San Francisco. Head coach Kyle Shanahan. Christian McCaffrey, my goodness, who's, by the way, this year's MVP, offensive MVP. Brian Greasy, as Jeremy Balrick has mentioned. And we also have Anthony Lynn. So you've got the commonality again, and I'll repeat it again. You Mike Shanahan, Evan Henry, Brian Greasy, and Anthony Lynn. So we have running backs here. And now we for this year's San Francisco club, you got – you know, we're trading one can of hand for another as far as head coach. Christian McCaffrey is your running back. Brian Grease is your quarterback. Those are the quarterback. And Anthony Lynn, who, by the way, who was a running back and assist, and is now the uh, run, running back's coach and assistant head coach. If you can get all of that, listen to the show again. All right. So with that said, okay, Jeremy, let the cat out of the bag with Brian Greasy. There you go. There's some common stats. Oh, I it may be common stats, but like I said, he is the only NFL player in history to earn an NFL champ or a NCAA national championship ring his senior year. Right. Get drafted and earn a Super Bowl ring in that same 12 month period. It's remarkable, isn't it? Oh, so you look at how long the NFL's been around, and I think at that time it was, well, let's see, if 98 was that, and 2020 or 2023 was 100 years. Right. So track 15 years, that was 85 years of the NFL. So 85 different world championship winners because the Super Bowl is just the nickname of the world championships, no matter how you look at it. Yeah, but let me also point out to you another guy, so people should, when they go back in the history books, what about Tony Dorsett, who did win a national championship at Pittsburgh, and he won one with the Dallas Cowboys. So I just want to mention that. Now, whether they were done in that period of time is another story. What there's a commonality where the Cowboys and the Panthers had some in common, and Tony Dorsett indeed did that. That's all I'm just mentioning. There's been about 38 players that have won the national championship and won a Super Bowl in the history of the NFL. There's only one that did it his rookie year. Exactly. Well, no, you're also. Well, I told everybody that we're going to hit this thing hard with facts wherever they come from, so it doesn't matter. People will learn from this show, and we encourage comments in the chat room as well. So, yeah, I mean, this is a show where we're not going to preview game. We're not going to do everything that every single outlet on there is doing, doing that. We're making sure you're loaded with information. If you're hungry for a baked potato, we're going to make sure your baked potato has all kinds of sour cream on there, cheese, uh, chives. I better keep my mouth shut because I just got done eating. I don't want to get hungry again. So with that said, Jacob, you know, think, have a think about this for a second. If Tom Brady doesn't exist, we're talking about Brian Greasy as one of the greatest Michigan quarterbacks. We right. really are because 83 career starts, near 20,000 yards. Near, you know, he had uh, – Basically, he had a uh, basically a good ratio of TDs and interceptions. Didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He had a year with 10 starts and near 70% passing at a time where they didn't have all the protections for the wide receiver. So think about this. For, he would be up there for the team. Not to say he'd be the greatest quarterback all time. Just say for Michigan. From Michigan, if Tom Brady doesn't exist, he'd be a top three to five. He just really would. But – Tom Brady kind of takes everybody's um, power. They takes their thing away. You know, I mean, he's going to take either way. But I'm happy for Greasy because he was also a bear. He did pretty good there. You know what I'm saying? He did great good in Chicago also. So I'm happy for him. And, and you know something? He does have those records, including what Jeremy said. Well, let me tell you one thing about what I like about Brian Greasy. When he left Monday Night Football because they couldn't figure out what they were doing with their crew. Made a great decision going to the 49ers. He hadn't looked back since. So. You know, ESPN's lost because they couldn't figure out what they were doing on Monday night. Turned out to be San Francisco's game for sure. So, 
With that said, I'm going to turn it over to Candy. Well, give me your thoughts on this, and then he's going to go out there and provide a ton of facts. So, Brian, Brian Greasy, that's, that's an awesome accomplishment. I mean, I can't imagine in a 12-month span winning both of them. Um, as far as Michigan goes, obviously Tom Brady is one of the best quarterbacks that's ever come out of there. And Brian Greasy, it's a close second Maybe you could even argue how close they might really be. But one of the interesting facts that's also going to happen at this Super Bowl that's never happened before is Terry Killens is to become the first person ever to play and officiate in a Super Bowl. That's never been done before. I thought that was kind of interesting to play and now officiate in a Super Bowl. There are all kinds of other interesting stats that we could bring up. Uh, question, guys. Franchises that have met multiple times in a Super Bowl. Can you guess who has met multiple times in Super Bowls? Jacob. Met, who's uh, met multiple? The, the teams that have met multiple times. The teams. Yep. Let's see. You got the. You obviously have the Chiefs and the Niners. Okay. Yep. You have the Chiefs and the Niners. You've got – that goes without saying. You've got – oh. Oh, geez. That is a um, – let's see. I'm trying to think a second. No, tell me. Jeremy? I almost want to say it's Pittsburgh and Dallas. It's a good one. That's a good one. A really good one. I looked at that. It was almost unbelievable – the first time Dallas won 21 17, and then they followed it up with a 35 to 31 win as well. They were really tightly contested games. I like that one. So, Pittsburgh and Dallas have actually met three times. Washington and the Dolphins have met twice. The Bengals, 49ers, twice. The Bills, Dallas, twice. New England, the Giants, twice. New England, Philadelphia, twice. New England, LA Rams, twice. And then, of course, Kansas City, San Francisco. Well, you know darn good and well that the uh, no questions asked that the uh, NFL wants the the Commanders and Dolphins, so it's not the Redskins, Dolphins anymore, so they can actually do it. You know what I mean? Because right now it's just sort of clashing and making people mad. If the Commanders make the Super Bowl, no one's going to say anything. They're not going to. It's a different uh, generation. Well, Jacob, who's to say the Commanders are going to be the? Commanders anymore. For all we know, Washington might want to go back to Redskins. They don't care. Yeah, don't that's know. true. And which I mean, and, I would complain, and, and, but I get you mean. It's funny you got Dan Snyder out of there. Go ahead, Jeremy. It's funny you bring that up because the new ownership plus the Native American Tribal Council has put a petition to have the Redskins name restored. Here's the deal, Jeremy. They didn't want Dan Snyder to be a part of it. And if new ownership says the Redskins are okay, let me tell you, they're going to go back to it. Dan Snyder tried diligently to go ahead and keep it, but they simply hated him. They wouldn't give him a new stadium or anything. Uh, let me tell you, the Washington commander is going to be the Washington Redskins in no time. And I'm glad you brought that up, Jeremy, because it's all about Daniel Snyder now that he's out of the picture. And if you add Magic Johnson to the picture – Redskins will be the Redskins in due time. Go ahead, Jeremy. I do have an interesting thing of note. When it comes to individual players, not players that have played in repeated Super, Stol Super Bowls, University of Michigan is fifth. Number one is University of Miami with 117. Number two is USC with 111. Number three is Penn State with 103. And kudos to Mel Farr Jr. and his alma mater. Isn't that UCLA? Correct. Yeah. 102 and Michigan with 99. Okay. Well, it's all right again. But it had, but when you're talking about, like I said, you got Tom Brady with 10 and Chad Henney with three right off the rip. Right. <laughs> There's 13 of them. <laughs> well, you know, I realize my vision is bad, but I know one thing. When I see 130 U of M, 130. Now, we all know we can stats or whatever you want to make them to be, Jeremy. I mean, if you're a journalist, you understand that anyway, right, Jeremy? You've come yeah. a long way from your first days here with that's, the Tribune. That's why I immediately went to the research, sir. That's that's okay. 
<laughs> I know you are expected to call me boss like they do on NCIS with Mark Harmon and the rest of these people. <laughs> Don't forget that. Okay, Mr. Ballrick. Okay, that's okay. okay, Chief. Okay. What's that? Okay, Chief. <laughs> I'll go do the election. <laughs> no, no, no. You go like the old cartoon back in the day. Okay, dookie. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Call me dookie. Okay, dookie. I got to tell you, I, I have to say something about Jeremy and Jacob, though. First time I've actually brought you guys, I think, on a show like this. And these two guys are my prized pupils. They really are. <laughs> yeah. He's got more gray hair. Well, maybe not. I don't know. I, what are you about? I have no hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, well, the John Deere hit Jeremy's head. That's okay, but at any rate, Wait, you know. more gray hair. <laughs> yeah, but getting back to the Redskins situation. By the way, Anthony Bianchi uh, put a nice guest out guest out there, the Cowboys and the Bills. Good job, Anthony. Hope you have a great Super Bowl Sunday. So you know the Redskins are going to be back. It was it was a Daniel Snyder thing. It isn't going to be about the new regime. And I don't know. I would. And let me tell you, the NFL would. Love Nothing better than to have the Redskins. Well, back. we're gonna have Keith, we're gonna have pandering simps like Keith Law say, "Oh, I, do, I don't want to say the name Braves, you know, and all that kind of stuff." And we're gonna have those kind of writers. But in the end, it's gonna be. I mean, the, the fans are gonna get in their way. It's just this. Here, 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 here's what it really breaks down to. Okay, if the Washington Redskins win, it wouldn't matter what they're being called under that name because yeah. Joe Gibbs is unquestionably the best coach in that. Franchise's history. George Allen coached guys his age, so to speak, the over the hill gang, right? Yeah. But it doesn't matter who's in charge. Good stuff. I like having a debate about the Redskins. I never believed that they should have gone ahead and changed the name, but it was all about Daniel Snyder, a guy who went out there and charged that fan base to attend training camp. If you couldn't see a red flag at the beginning with this guy, then tell me what a red flag is. And I must have went stupid the other day. All right, so good stuff. All right, Candy, right, you got some other good ones, and some of these might end up turning into debates. You never know. Good stuff. Okay, so this one isn't one that's going to be a debate, but so the Chiefs, this is the sixth time they've appeared in a Super Bowl. San Francisco, this is the eighth time. So my question to you, the panel, how many franchises have never won a Super Bowl? And I'm excluded from that. Jack, I would say Five, four or five. Jaguars be one. Texans would be another. Lions. Um, let's see. And get me the other two. Oh, let me see. I'm going to say Jaguars, Texans, Lions, Browns, Bills, and Vikings. So six. Oh, okay. There's actually, there's actually 12. 12. That have never yeah, won. Like old days. Oh. That have never, that have never that won. Never won. There's other ones that have played and lost, but Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. Cleveland Panthers, Falcons. I forgot that's, Panthers played in it. I, I, that's the ones that have, yeah, okay. Now that's where it gets tricky, okay? It you is, know, it is. I know, this is what you would see on a state exam if you were studying for one, where all it takes is that slight little word that can Throw you off. Don't I know? I'm taking enough state exams. It's called a trick question. Go ahead, Candy. It is, but you know, I got to throw in these once in a while. You know, I mean, that makes it fun, right? Oh yeah, okay. no question. What, is it seven or eight? He said 12? twelve. Twelve that have not won. Oh, have there not won. Other than that, that who haven't? Come on, right. Jeremy. The words not one. Okay. Okay. So one more question. What team is the only team to play in four Super Bowls but never held a lead? Would that be the Vikings? Yeah. That would be my guess. Very good, Jacob. Ding 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 ding. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to throw a Buffalo Bills nugget in there, they went to four straight Super Bowls and lost them all. I think they had a couple leads up. Yeah, they had. I, I just said they went to four straight and lost yeah, them all. Yeah, I didn't yeah. say whether they had a lead. That wasn't part of it, Jacob. They even right. had a lead when they ended up losing wide right. Uh-huh. Right. All right, well. What, From Tyler Bass. Oh, I mean Norwood. All right, let me mention a couple things here before we go any further. Just, you know, that fire up is being broadcast around the world. 
the audio version of Fire Up can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts. Please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We are striving for more subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Want to be a guest? No problem. Comment in the chat room is one way to do it. Or send your topic ideas to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. If you want to advertise, talk additionally, give me a call at 904 304 We broadcast live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Our website is www.southfloridatribune.com, Twitter slash X at Tribune South. Candy Ebling is behind the scenes today. She's on the air, and she's a mastermind behind a lot of websites. Good stuff, Candy. Also, I have a book out there called Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. Talks about old school media versus new school media. It is available on Kindle and Amazon. Plus, South Florida Tribune does have a working agreement to work with NGBN TV. And this partnership has a potential. We'll actually... I'll get, we'll work with Roku, Apple TV, Amazon, and mobile devices. It's, of course, a partnership that will coincide with Sideline Sports. It'll also be in 85% of the homes in the United States and Canada and 4.1 billion mobile devices. Want to get that promo in? Again, my book that, that I have out there is, is one that anybody can go out there and read. I don't care what's new to the business or or whether you're just looking to get an idea how the business works, my book, Lessons from the Microphone, should enable you to do that. So with that said, anything else you want to add, Candy? Oh, I'm just getting started. Keep so going. let me ask you, guys, the very first Super Bowl ticket in 1967 cost how much? I'd say 10 bucks. Jeremy? Five. 25. That's my guess. Scott, do you have a guess or do you know? No, I'm not going to even venture a guess on this. He was there. Don't you know? Yeah, well, you know what? I might as well just say, I might as well say I'll go out there and say $10. The cost was $12. Wow. So now, fast forward to now, does anybody know what the cost of a ticket is? $9,000. $9, oh, let me go here. They said that if the Lions would have made the Super Bowl, the cost was between seven and eleven thousand dollars. And when they didn't win and it became the 49ers, the price dropped by 25%. So that means it's between four and seven thousand dollars. You know, so, I mean, for some reason, I knew we were gonna throw that Lions back, and I couldn't agree with you more. The Lions would have been the better draw. So all we can hope for now is that they get to New Orleans. That'll be a party like no ever on Bourbon Street. So the average cost of a ticket to the past five Super Bowls was 6680 The lowest price of a Super Bowl ticket on the resale market after the conference championships was 8586 There is a $1.1 billion estimated economic impact for the Southern Nevada economy in 2024. There is approximately 16.2 million Americans plan to watch the game at a bar or a restaurant. And the, it's a 192% 20-year increase in the cost of a 30-second Super Bowl ad. Now, as far as the Super Bowl ads, and I have to throw this out there because I put this out on Facebook. Seven seconds cost you $30 million. It's the same that the Jets paid for Aaron Rodgers this year. But I'm bumped. Yeah. He'll, he can make a comeback unless he gets injured again. I agree. I agree. They expect 71,835 fans at the game. And then <clears throat> here was some interesting, I thought. Um, do you know what the highest price was paid for a Super Bowl ticket? 25 grand. $175,000. 40000 hmm. I, I was closer. I'm going up to Bob Barker. No, I saw one that went on after. But maybe you're talking retail, but I'm talking now. I know that there was one that was sold on StubHub because they did a big article for it for $175,000. Wow. So oh, here's for all of you people that like to, <clears throat> let's see. 
eat during the Super Bowl? Because that's what else do people do? 1.45 billion chicken wings will be eaten. 10 million pounds of ribs will be sold this week. 11.3 million pounds of potato chips. 20, 250 million pounds of avocados will be purchased for guacamole. Um, what uh, there was? Oh, I wanted to. One billion dollars will be spent on beer on, the, on Super Bowl Sunday. Not even what you bought yesterday or the day before. One billion will be spent on beer today. Five hundred and seventeen million on soft drinks. And two hundred and twenty-six million on whiskey. And what's, the what's the cost of televisions that'll be busted? And we'll see on um, Twitter that you when they when their team loses. <laughs> uh, average cost of the TV is about four hundred and fifty dollars because you got to take in the fact the bigger ones versus the smaller one. So yeah. average cost is right about four hundred fifty five hundred dollars on an average. We see about forty of those videos hit the internet. So two grand. So you, so 40, 45 morons. So you know what? I added to that chicken wings total when I got 20, 10 early and 10 later. So and when you talk about the revenue for Vegas, so this Super Bowl is already paid for Allegiance Allegiant Stadium. 1.9, what'd you say, Candy? 1.9 billion dollars for that stadium. Is that correct? And, and if they get about 10 billion. Then, then they're already in the black. Then they'll lose money off it because they mission accomplished. And to make things even more interesting, now that everybody has seen how well Vegas can hold the Super Bowl, they're going to be in the rotation now. Okay, without using your Google, I have a question for everybody. Go okay. ahead. Who are the only two players to win a Super Bowl with two different teams? Uh, well, Brady. Tom Brady's won. <laughs> Definitely not Jackie Smith. <laughs> Keep going. I'm working on it. It's a good <laughs> no <question>. Google. <laughs> What's that? No Google. I'm <laughs> just kidding. I'm, I, I don't need Google. Is, I, I've been around it, for. I, give us a hint. Is the second person what position did he play? Running back. That just threw everybody off. <laughs> no. Running back. I'll give you a bigger hint. He played for the same team that Tom Brady played for originally. So the Patriots. That narrows it down quite a bit. You know, you got it down to about twenty. Well, I, I was oh, Stanley Wilson. Case, I would go Gronkowski. No. No, he's a running back. He said. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Tight end. All right, but Gronkowski um, has. To. It's not James White. Game winning rushing touchdown for the Rams. <sighs> for the Rams. Because Cam Akers was hurt again. Hi, Chris Rulo. Look at her. The Gypsy Soldier went out there, and uh, Chris Rulo Candy put her up there. She's an amazing woman. We met her in Jacksonville. Goes by the Gypsy Soldier. And if there's anyone that lives up to that name, we are hoping to get her on a future edition of Motor City Mad Mouth Show. She'll be one colorful guest for sure when we do get Chris on here. Now, running back, I'm trying to think. The answer is coming in 30 seconds. Should I start the Jeopardy tune? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, I need it. I, I, you guys keep hammering. I'm, I'm really working this. You got me. You got me on this one, Jeremy. I got the first. I got half of it. So, Sonny Michelle. Sonny Michelle. Okay, that, that's a good. That's a great. I like that. Sonny Michelle. That's right. He was with the Patriots and won it for the Rams. In consecutive years, if you remember right. <laughs> well, hey, listen, Gronkowski did win it as a tight end, so uh, wrong position, but great idea. They said the only two, but the, what's funny is they, um, there's only been two players that were from a different team that did it on the same team, too. Right. Well, they the one, first team and then went to the same team and did it. From yeah, there's, different a, there's a guy out there, though, who has won 
couple that have won multiple Super Bowls. I believe Deion Sanders won them for the 49ers and the Cowboys, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Did he? And then, about from different teams. If you go from different teams to the same team. Right. No, I know. There's but, only two. And one's I'm, a linebacker. But I'm throwing a couple of other names. Charles Haley was a guy that, to me, yep. I was. Uh, yeah, he was the most unbelievable player. Wherever he goes, he wins. Von Miller, linebacker. Yeah, there's it's another one, too. And with Sonny Michelle on the Rams the same year. Right. So there you go. We're well, throwing facts some, that's at you. We're, we're throwing facts at you, fast and furious. Good but, stuff, uh, Jeremy. Let's see. Uh, after Tom Brady won the Super Bowl, the next year is when they added A.B., wasn't it? Antonio Brown. I believe you're right. Yeah. Because they added him in the offseason because their slot guy went got hurt and they didn't re-sign him. Right. Boy, that's that story's just a tragedy almost. You know what I'm saying? A B. Right. Yeah, Ivantez Perfect did him no justice. No. Yeah. Hi Ralph, how you doing? Ralph appears on the Thursday. What's edition. up, Ralph? Hey Ralph. What Jeremy, George Icorn, and Candy. What else you got, Candy? Candy. Oh, Candy. I didn't think you lost your voice, Candy, when you did, but that's okay. Thank you. Which which two teams have five losses in the Super Bowl? Um, can't be the Chargers. They've only been to one. Could one of them be the Cowboys? Patriots wouldn't be one, would it? That the Patriots, Patriots okay. are one. Yeah, because yeah. they lost two to Eli, and then they lost yeah. another one to Philly, and then they one lost to the, the Bears. One, one to the Bears. Bears. One with Bledsoe, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other team? It'd be Kansas City. No. No. Um, Packers. Broncos. Broncos. What city has hosted the most Super Bowls? New Orleans. New Orleans. Oh. oh. Wow. L.A. Miami. Miami has hosted 11. Next year, when New Orleans hosts their 11th, they'll be tied. Oh, okay. Uh, what else? Who's? Who, who, what is the oldest franchise in the NFL to never win a Super Bowl? Lions. No, I think the Cleveland Browns or oh. the Arizona Cardinals. There it is. There yeah, it is. was the Chicago Cardinals first. It was the Chicago Cardinals, which was actually established before the NFL was in 1896, and the NFL was formed in 1920. And you so, think about it, they've had as many moves as the Oakland A's, right? When they start out in... yeah. <laughs> I think it's Chicago, St. Louis, and now Arizona, unless there's a stop somewhere along the lines that I missed. The Port Portsmouth, Ohio Spartans joined the NFL in 1930, which was 10 years after the Cardinals. Right. Okay. We know about the Portsmouth team being the Lions' original destination, if I remember right. Yes, sir. Yeah, but the Cardinals have been in three places. You talk about Chicago, St. Louis, and now Arizona. 50 million adult Americans are likely to bet on the Super Bowl. $1.3 billion will be legally wagered on today's Super Bowl. That is up 20% from last year. Wait till you see next year's. Did you guys already see the logo colors? I, I have not. They're blue and gold. Oh, really? New Orleans? No, I, I don't think so. It, it's the wrong color of blue. It, I, I don't know. I'll start. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll start <laughs> looking at logos uh, soon enough, but not today. As I, I struggle with ro Roman numerals, let alone logos. Yeah, let's see. That's going to be 59, right? Right. right. 
I think though for Super Bowl Fifty, they went with the actual five zero. They did not go with the Roman numerals. If my memory serves me correctly. All right, chat room. Yet yeah, let's get this chat room going out here. You want to throw some facts at us? We'll put them up on your screen, and we'll even mention you as well. Keep rolling, Candy. Um, let me see. Let me find another one. Um, let's see. Oh, we already said huh? what team has the mo- what team has the most Super Bowl appearances. Let's see. Would that be the Patriots? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, what people have to understand about the Patriots, once upon a time, I believe Bill Parcells was a coach, right? Uh, yeah. Yep. And I know they've had other coaches before, Belichick, that got in there beforehand. I know Parcells. Raymond Barry was the Raymond Barry was the eighty-five. Yeah, he did get in there in eighty-five, didn't he? A lot of people won't remember that, but that. But that eight, guys like Jacob that are from Illinois will because that's when the Bears. I was old. six years old, seven years old with that, so I still remembered. Yeah, but at least you one you one thing you have over Jeremy and I, you saw the Bears win a Super Bowl. The last time the Lions won an NFL championship yeah. was on my birthday, December 29th, nineteen fifty seven. I'm happy to say the Lions played into the end of January. We played yeah. 20 games in a season that's never been done by any Lions team in history. Because you know why? There was never this many games as there has been the last right. three years. I was at the age where I had to go to bed at halftime because they were blowing them away. <laughs> Let that be the worst of your problems. Yeah. You, know, where, you know where I was for that game? I was actually a student at University of South Florida, and we were watching the game over in the – you know, where we, the student area where we all got the living room or dining room or whatever you want to call it out there, TV watching area. It's pretty good the way the Bears hammered them. I mean, the only thing I wish would have happened, I think everybody has probably talked about it, is while I think there, there's one regret that Mike Ditka probably has is that Walter Payton did not get a touchdown and, and William the Red Bear. That was an ego thing by Ditka because. Yeah. He probably thought they were coming back. He probably didn't see. Um, he probably didn't see um, Peyton retiring you know, like a couple years later. He he probably thought all of those things. And it wasn't even the run. He also had a screen pass um, that, that had all the open field, like 40, 30, 40, 50 yards open field that was thrown so badly it made the dancer Walter Peyton trip. Well, call it whatever you want. That. The bottom line is Walter Peyton should have gotten a touchdown in that he game. Should've. He, he should, should have, but those are the things. Justify it any way you want, Trishner. It doesn't matter. Peyton should have gotten a touchdown. No, no, no justification. I was like, people forget that it's never brought up. They're bringing up the one yard line and um, and Perry. It was like that. That's one thing, but it's another, and it, it wasn't even Peyton's fault. It shows if uh, if Jim McMahon was in that game to throw that screen, he's got a touchdown probably, because that was a terrible screen pass by Fuller. Right. I agree. And yet, Jim McMahon, while the Bears are going through all their quarterback debates, whether you should keep Justin Fields or go over the next bus in the NFL, Caleb Williams, because he will be a bust. Okay. Jim Mr. McMahon, dress Boy, the dre- yeah. his dress will be a bust also. Yeah. Okay. Well, but we'll just keep it uh, where we're at here. Mm-hmm. Jim McMahon, to me, is unquestionably one of the best quarterbacks that the Bears have ever had. And I think what a lot of people really have to realize. Because he didn't like Pete Rozelle, so when he had his headband, he put Rozelle on it. Here's the guy who's a rebel with a god. Got to love Jim McMahon for that. Oh, really I did. love McMahon. McMahon was one of the smartest. He 25 straight wins as a on the regular season. One of the one of the smartest quarterbacks. People did not see it because he's such a rebel, but he's a very smart quarterback. Well, going to Brigham Young, you can't be stupid going there. I yeah. they've got a lot of intelligent quarterbacks. Steve Young was one of those that came out of there. So, mm-hmm. Jim McMahon, Steve Young, the list goes on and on. I'm trying to think that they produced. Ty Detmer, right? Yeah, Ty Detmer was the guy I was thinking about, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they produce a lot of very intelligent quarterbacks at BYU. I mean, my last yeah. recollection of BYU is when they smoked Central Florida, they <sighs> smoked a Raton Bowl, and Zach Wilson looked good. 
not going to talk about what he looks nowadays. Well, well the, the air raid, I'm just saying, though, the air raid offense helped. You know, it's like it, it was a very uh, state of the art for the day. Okay. Well, if you got candy out, this is just a, this is so much fun being able to educate. And Candy's done an incredible job here doing that. So, how many countries do you think the Super Bowl is broadcast in? And in how many different languages? I'm going to say 30 different languages, and I'm going to say over 190 <laughs> countries. 34 languages and 100 countries. 180 countries. Okay. Sorry. You know what, right there. Look at this guy. He was very close. Thank, thankful I didn't have. I would have given it the over over his number, but I'm glad that Jacob got it right on the first one. Go ahead. Super Bowl Sunday is the second biggest eating day of the year. What's the first? Thanksgiving. What is it? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. Uh, or or it's Jeremy's day, uh, Lions football. <laughs> on a Sunday. Well, hey, listen, you know, we talked periodically about the Lions. They're on Thanksgiving. They're contributing to the calorie count. All the time. <laughs> exactly. For a lot of years, when nobody wanted that game. The Lions and the Cowboys took it. And many years ago when I was in Arizona, I talked to Jerry Jones about it when Kansas City didn't think they should get him. And if anybody knows how powerful Jerry Jones is, Detroit. And us aren't giving it up. And what ended up happening created a prime time game. Go ahead, Candy. There are 150 Super Bowl rings created for each winning franchise to dole out. Each edition of the rings is unique, designed by the owner. The rings for the 2022 Super Bowl champ, Los Angeles Rams, have a removable top that reveals pieces of the actual game ball in them. That's pretty cool. I got my nephew, and they're doing those removable top things. I got my nephew a little replica Braves um, ring for his Christmas, and it's a removable, kind of removable top showing little things. It wasn't a piece of baseball, but. Yeah, but you know what? There's become a trend recently in sports where a lot of teams are doing it from different leagues. They really are. I've seen it now, and yeah, you, you work that hard to get a Super Bowl. You might as well do it. Now, the one thing I will say about the Super Bowl, which I'm really impressed which is the San Francisco 49ers have invited all their employers to go to the Super Bowl, you know, and that to me is classy. It really is. The 49ers have always been a class organization over the years. But when you take all your employees, including interns, to go to this game, to me, that is championship material for the Niners. More power to them. And by the way, does anybody know where the 49ers won their first Super Bowl? Mm, let's see. The first one would have been eight. Would it be Miami? Nope. You had your guess. What about you, Jeremy? Chicago. No. Isn't it gold? Oh. Nope. Their first Super Candy. You probably do you know without researching it? Okay, because uh, huh. the the 49ers actually won their first Super Bowl at the Pontiac Silverdome Super Bowl 16 when Joe Montana, Cincinnati Bengals. And you would see that match up again later, I believe, in Miami. And we all know the catch from Montana to Dwight Clark, called by the legendary Vin Scully, put a lot of people in immortality. So, yeah, the 49ers won it over Super Bowl 16 in Detroit. Unbelievable, isn't it? Wait, bringing up Chicago, though, the, the 49ers completely shocked the world in 88, 89, if you could say. You know, by uh, going in, going into four below zero and absolutely destroying the Bears. Yeah, well, again, it's again, you know, when you look at a lot of these things, we all know Super Bowl one, the Green Bay Packers ended up beating the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, Bart Starr, obviously, and the Packers ended up, I think, winning what the first two Super Bowls, if I remember right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we know that the Kansas City Chiefs got into the victory parade. I believe they beat the Minnesota Vikings, if my memory serves me correctly. And a guy by the name of Len Dawson 
was a quarterback, and he subsequently went on to be a broadcaster in the Kansas City area. Then again, if you're a great football player in a small in a smaller town, if Miami was for a long time until it exploded, your your football players become college and right. commentators, and nobody has a problem with them. We have a couple of them here in Miami: Jimmy Seplo, Joe Rose, just to name a couple of them that have uh, and that have done real well. Oh, yeah. Kimball yeah. is another one here in Miami that's considered, you know, top notch on the area. I've seen these guys. I've met them once or one time here and there, but not often. I'll tell you this, though. It's like just thinking about that. The only reason I thought Miami for that first game whatsoever is because of that second game. I think that's why I thought of Miami that first mm -hmm. time. It's so, okay. Yeah. Which Super Bowl was it that two brothers competed? Coached against each other. Our boss. San yep. Francisco Baltimore. Yep, San Francisco Baltimore. I believe that was uh, their last Super Bowl they won was 2005. 2013. 13. Wow. I know it was the blackout Super Bowl. Oh, what do you mean? Talking about like the people in the stands or? No, the Super Bowl literally had a 30 minute delay. Because there was a blackout in the middle of the third quarter. San Francisco was winning that game and there was a blackout and they come back and the Baltimore Ravens come back and win. I think there was like 10 minutes left in the third quarter at the time when the blackout happened. Isn't isn't that the craziest thing? Just something like that happened, like the rain delay for the Cubs in game seven. Yeah. You know, and all the momentum's coming to um, the Indians and then all of a sudden the rain delay. It's like you get a blackout like that. I mean, things just happen like that sometimes. Well, here, you know, here's an interesting thing that I brought up on Wednesday night. We know Joe Montana played for the 49ers. I was actually at Joe Montana's final regular season game when they beat the Lions 24-3 over at Candlestick Park on my the night before my 30th birthday, and he wore the number 16. But you know what? When he went to Kansas City – because Len Dawson's number was retired. He had to take the 16 and turn it around, and he was number 19 there, and he yeah. took the Chiefs all the way to the AFC championship game but couldn't come away with another ring. He looked – there's a lot of there's a lot of players that switch. Like, you've heard of it with um, Joe Namath went to the Rams. You hear San Francisco 49ers for L.J. Simpson. You hear of those. <clears throat> Joe Montana, outside of Brady. Brady, we obviously have his Super Bowl. Joe Montana will be, might be one of the best to play the switch teams, get older, and still have the results. Uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Very few people really understand that Joe Montana was four wins and no losses in the Super Bowl. So, yeah, absolutely. But that's the that's the thing I think about is like there are a lot of players that like you think of Emmett Smith and what he was doing with the Cardinals. He broke the record, but. All right, we got about seven minutes to go here. Candy, what else do you have? Oh, let's see. Um, let's. Oh, you get me. What? What is the oldest NFL stadium? The Lambo. Lambo. Soldier uh, Field. I you know, I thought Soldier Field was the oldest. Oh, oh, that's right, because it wasn't Lambo till later. Then they played at a party. Yeah, that's right. Because it'd be like 71, they played Soldier, right? Right, you're old. Jacob. They've, it opened in 19, Soldier Field opened in 1954. Yeah, the Bears played Wrigley Field for ages, though. Yep. It has been the Bears Stadium. Okay, yes. It opened in 19, and has been the Chicago Bears Stadium since 1971. It is by far the NFL's oldest stadium. What is the oldest NFL logo? Oh, geez. Brown? Because it's the same. They don't really have a logo, but. Yeah. I could say the oldest. Bears. Any other guesses, guys? Packers. You know what? I, I think it's either between the Packers or the Steelers. The Arizona Cardinals currently have the oldest NFL logo still in use today. As a Cardinals logo, as we know it, was made in 1901. That's true, because then they were right, St. Well, Louis. 
I'll just say this, the bid walls don't change anything except locations. <laughs> and I think they settled down with the final one. Arizona <laughs> for the Cardinals. I'm glad that they found the place. And Candy and I had a chance to tour that stadium. It was really beautiful. In fact, few people don't realize that Allegiant Stadium, their design was mainly predicated off of the Cardinals where you have that movable field that goes outside back and forth. And I can imagine that there are a lot of similarities between those two venues. I think they're called State Farm Stadium. I'm not actually sure, but I'm almost certain. I still... I still miss the being very honest. I still miss the Cardinals in Bush Stadium. You know, I still miss that. Yeah, that, that was that was unfortunate. It really was. A guy that I spent over at the Citadel, Dan Deerdorf, played for the St. Louis Cardinals, and Dan was one of the nicest people I ever meet. Well, no, nah, it's no, nah, it's like, but he also had Deerdorf said the restaurant too. So I can imagine how many stories were there. You know, <laughs> well, I, I like I said, I covered Michigan football, and Dan did along with Jim Brandstetter, went out there and did games, and I had a chance. It was unbelievable. Dan, I took a photo with Dan, and here's a guy that just doesn't get enough credit because he never really won any championships. But mark my word, anybody that knows anything about f- pro football history will tell you right now that, that that was unbelievable. I do want to make one special note that we mentioned on Wednesday Sports Exchange, or no, it was actually Pundit's Pundit, excuse me, I am really glad that Steve Michael did get into the Hall of Fame. If this was if there was ever a person that was belonged there, Steve McMichael definitely did. Any thoughts, Jeremy? I've been seeing you quite long in a long time. I didn't know if you lost your voice or whether you're in the twilight zone. Just been waiting for something that I'd want to talk about. <laughs> well, go ahead. What do you no, want to talk about? No, I mean I I, I said, answered the one the last question that I was asked and I didn't have an answer for this one. I no, that's okay, Jeremy. You know what? You're always full of information. I will say you and Candy do a remarkable job on Sundays normally with your own show. And, of course, I've listened to the Thursday night show. You two make a great one-two punch. I, all, I often like to joke around with Jeremy, though, that when him and Candy do the show, okay, we call it Candy's Country Club, okay? When he does it with me, he's back to the meat grinder. But either way, extremely well in either situation that he's exposed to. So what year did the Super Bowl winners start visiting the White House? Mm, Would that be like uh, 84? Close. Any other guesses, guys? I would say 81 or 82 with Ronald Reagan. It was actually, Jeremy, you want to guess? 1986. 1980, the Pittsburgh Steelers were the first Super Bowl winners to be honored at a visit to the White House. Team met with President Jimmy Carter. Oh, Jimmy Carter. Waved a terrible towel during the victory ceremony. Has there ever been a year without a Super Bowl? Every year prior to 1965. And, uh, wait, uh, the year of the strike, what year was that? 83, 81? No, they, they had a Super Bowl. You know what? They had one they had that year. And the they Miami Dolphins. They started early. Yeah, the Miami Dolphins took on the Washington Redskins that year, if I remember right. Yeah, they had a good season is what they did, Jeremy. And, and you know, what guys like Joe Montana were walking the picket line that they couldn't afford to lose game checks. So if anybody thinks – you talk about labor for a moment here, okay? The NFL is not a place you want to mess around because they busted that union is what they did. Well, but they were the real Bears in 87, like Nick said. (laughs) With the 87 strike. Here's one for you guys. Only Only one Super Bowl MVP has ever been chosen from the losing team. Who was it and from what team? Was it from the Cowboys? It was. Was that um, was that too tall? I don't know who too tall was. Was too, too tall's tall name? Too tall Jones. Jones. It That's was he... Chuck Howley. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. What else? Um. I need that. Some of these. 
Has there ever been a shutout in the no. Super Bowl? No, no. no. The closest would have been the Vikings, but no. Well, I don't there, know. There, the, there were the three games the where they only team. scored three points, yes. Right. Right. Yeah, there might be a lot of teams that scored three points. In fact, the right. Cowboys beat the Dolphins 24-3, and the Patriots ended up beating the Rams 10-3. I don't know about the other points. Those are a couple. And wasn't there one that was like 55-10, to 10, 49ers versus Chargers or something? Like uh, that? 49ers, Broncos. Broncos, yeah. I knew it was one of them where it was like 55 to 10. No, don't yeah. worry. I, mean, the Bron- I believe the Chargers got smoked one year or two by, I believe it was the 49ers. I don't know if it was by that margin. It definitely won't be tonight, that's for sure. So far, there have been seven teams that have won back-to-back Super Bowls. Can we name them? Patriots. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Dallas. Packers? No, not Packers. I'm yeah, sorry. Packers. Oh, yeah. Yes, the Packers. Because well, I, too. I think Dallas and Miami should be added to that. I think the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. They're on the field. Yeah, Patriots, season. Packers, Dolphins, Steelers, Cowboys. There's Broncos. two more. Broncos. Broncos. And one yeah. more. Mm. No. It would not be tonight. Yet. I mean, that could happen, but 49ers. Yeah. Okay. Um, and okay, well, we all, if uh, what's, if Purdy wins the Super Bowl with the 49ers tonight, does that make him closer to Tom Brady than Pat Mahomes does? Because Pat Mahomes was a first round pick and Purdy was a late round pick like Tom right. Brady. Purdy's in his own league, just be honest, Purdy's in his own league. He just is. I don't care if he's not Tom Brady, I don't know anything. No one's done this from Mr. Irrelevant. He's in his own in his own element. I'll say one thing about the Kansas City Chiefs on my Twitter account. There's some of the best. I have some incredible followers with the Kansas City Chiefs on my Twitter account. You give them information, they salivate and they share it. God bless the Chiefs for that. They're right. unbelievable. So there, the person who holds the record for the most Super Bowl appearances, and I will give you a hint: not a player. Which should give it away. Say say that again. Ask that again. Tell that again. The person who holds the record for the most Super Bowl appearances. John Madden. I want I want to say Bill Belichick. Correct, Scott. The reason why I say that is because of what he had done with the Giants before he went to the Patriots under Bill. He's appeared. I was also thinking announcers. I was also thinking announcers. He's not an announcer. Oh, the color commentator. Color. Now, Bill Belichick ever heard of No, I was talking John Madden. Oh, well, John Madden, well, I mean, that's a different. But he did win a Super Bowl with some incredible players back. Yeah. Yeah, I think he only played coach in the league like 10 years and he had had enough. We all know what he did as an announcer. That goes without saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me think if I can find another one. You guys have been yeah. doing really good. Well, let's see. Give us one more before we wrap up the broadcast. Go ahead, Candy. Oh, let me find one quick then. Um, it's got to be a good one, though. It can't be just anything. Um, let's see. No, I've done a lot of these good ones. Well, let's talk about a couple of cold weather cities that have hosted Super Bowls. I know Detroit had two, and I know the Minnesota Vikings, I believe. New York. Had, New York has. Yeah, multiple Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. Detroit and Minnesota definitely chime in there. After Dome compared to, and then a new one, the Lions had the same thing. Yeah, the last time that uh, Foxborough held it, they were like, ah, we're never doing this again. because They had to bring snowblowers out so people could kick field goals. Yeah, I believe that. Well, you want to bring that up? I'll never forget the time when I was at a, my first Super Bowl, Super Bowl Thirty Three, and I had the opportunity to spend time with Ron Meyer, the guy who brought out that guy to go ahead and kick that field goal that beat the Dolphins three to nothing. And Don Shula was livid, and Ron Meyer was laughing, and he should. He wouldn't stop winning a three to nothing game, and there was nothing illegal. But you're talking about the the, the prisoner. 
The snowplow. Yeah, that's what yeah. I am. Snowplow game. Yeah. Prisoner. I guess you could say he did some pretty good community service for his mm, area. Yeah. What do you got, Candy? Oh, oh we were going to say, which college has produced the most Super Bowl quarterbacks? Uh, USC. Cal. Five okay. quarterbacks. California. Okay. Aaron Rodgers, then Alabama and Notre Dame and Purdue. Well, Notre Dame's been around for 75,000 years. <laughs> I'd hope so. Yeah, but you know what's interesting, though, how she comes up with that one? I don't know who the third one is for Purdue, but I know that Bob Greasy and Drew Brees are two of them. And don't sell Purdue short when it comes to producing quarterbacks. They're one of the better quarterbacks schools out there. I know for a lot of years, Miami Hurricanes, you know, has developed a lot of players, but the Purdue Boilermakers don't, don't, don't like And that true, that. Kyle Orton should have been playing in that game in the Super Bowl. In the and you know what? I believe Kyle Orton was the third one, wasn't he? No. He was, it was Rex Grossman's year. He didn't yeah, play. But, oh, was it? Yeah, but I thought, he, oh, that's right. Okay. It was Rex Gross. Unfortunately, Rex Grossman's year. That was pathetic. It should have been Kyle Orton. Yeah. Been saying that forever. Yeah, but isn't he part of that question that Purdue went out there and uh, you've produced that? Uh, is he the third one on that list? So, Candy, that he was in a Super Bowl. It didn't. It didn't list the individual people. Oh, it didn't. It just. It just okay. Yeah, but Orton was that. Yeah, Orton yeah, was at the game. You're right, but. Well, all right. But, so that there you go. Yeah. So, Scott, I want to go back to you were talking about the use of Roman numerals. It yeah. began with the fifth Super Bowl, and then they added, and then they kept doing it. And the reason why is the Roman numerals were adopted to clarify any confusion that may occur because the NFL championship game, the Super Bowl, is played, played in the year following a chronologically recorded season. In other words, like the 2020 would cause confusion because while the majority of the season took place in 20. 20, the actual Super Bowl occurred in 21. So in order to do that, and why else would they have, would we have to Google Roman numerals every February? Interesting. Any, one more. One more the, the Lombardi Trophy, named after former Packers coach Vince Lombardi, is made each year by Tiffany and Company, and it is valued at how much? Mm. Is it about um, 500 grand? $50,000. Okay. And it weighs seven pounds. The, here's my thing. Well, I got to think. The, um, the, the, how it's, no, not the, yeah, the George H. House trophy for the NFC. The When the Bears won, I remember that awesome trophy that they had when they won theirs before they went to the Super Bowl. That little piece of garbage that, um, that, that, that uh, Purdy was holding, it's like, what? Did they not want the NFC title game one to look better than the <laughs> than the, the Lombardi because it looked horrible. In the last 10 Super Bowls, the team that has scored last has won every time. There you go. That's a great way to end this broadcast there. So for all you folks that wonder who scores last, that's who your prediction could be. I'm not making a prediction. I don't want to today. All I okay. know is what's – uh, I'm not making a prediction. I hope we've given you folks information. You can draw your own conclusions, both past and present. And you can only hope that this game here turns out to be a classic for sure. And it certainly has the makings of one. There was certainly no shortage of storylines with a mystery irrelevant versus a guy like Patrick Mahomes. And when you think about Patrick Mahomes for a minute, he's invested, and I'll mention this on a show later this week, but he owns a piece of the Kansas City Royals, I believe, sporting Kansas City, as well as a bunch of other properties as well. So this guy is not only making it on the field with the Chiefs, but he's a remarkable businessman himself outside of outside the line when it comes to football. Anything you want to add, Jeremy? No, let's just have a good game this afternoon. I'll be following it by GameCast. Um I told you why prior to the show. I don't want to bring everybody down, so I'll leave it at that. Okay. Well, with that said, I'm going to let Candy take us home the rest of the way. So go ahead, Candy. 
if you see the little red button down by Jeremy, it's the subscribe button. Please click it. Subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to Sidelines. And subscribe to Jeremy's channel too, Kneecap Biting. Because without all of our... I'm sorry, Jeremy, what were you going to say? Uh, I said... Without all... What? He said decap biting, and I said with the Motor City Lions. With the Motor City Lions, okay. Because without all of you and without all of the contributors to this show, we wouldn't be here. So we need subscribers to help share us, like us, tell all your friends about us. If you like to listen to podcasts, please subscribe. We're on Apple, Google, Spotify, iHeartRadio, you name it, wherever you can get your podcast that's where we're at there is a book that scott wrote and it is lessons with the microphone Oop, i'm pointing the wrong direction sorry lessons from the microphone get it on amazon or Kindle. <laughs> come to our website www.southfloridatribune.com you can see scott's writing you can see jeremy's writing you can see jacob's writing <clears throat> it's if, I write, if i write if i write but Go see our writing. Go see the pictures that I've taken. We also put all our broadcasts there. We have all kinds of transcripts. We have articles from about a local, a lot of the local colleges down here in South Florida. They send us their content. Go check us out. Um, and if you have ideas for this show or any of your other our other shows, I mean, we have 108 Stitches Baseball Talk. We have Inside the Pigskin. We have Sports Exchange. We have Pundits Pundit. We have... Motor City Mad Mall Show, which is an interview show that Scott does, one-on-one -on -one interviews. We do Fire Up. We do it always on Thursday, and then we do it sometimes on Sundays, Jeremy and I. Uh, let's see. We have Fire Up Wisconsin, Fire Up Michigan, Fire Up Florida. We have No Limits. We have a, a plethora. Whatever you want, come, come check out our channel. I think that's all. I think I've hit them all. Scott, did I miss anything? Oh, you did a great job, Andy. I should point out that next Sunday, folks, I'm going to be making a trip to a special stadium called the Sun Dome in Tampa, the Florida Atlantic University, Owl University of South Florida. What's so special about that place? To me, it's the greatest arena that I've ever been in. Why? Because it's the only arena around the world that I can say that I got my degree in, the University of South Florida. And I will be returning to this venue for the first time in over 30 years. And I'll tell you, I've got chills down my spine now. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when I go back to that arena, a place where I got my college degree, a BA in communication? It seems like yesterday, but boy, it's going to be an unbelievable game. And more importantly, the University of South Florida and Florida Atlantic University out are playing, playing great basketball. It's going to be an incredible experience. So what can I say? I'm looking forward to it. All right, with that said, I'll let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. We'll start off with Jacob. Um, I am, to, let's see, five days a week, most of the time. I'm also the Jake, um, Jake the Pundit and um, Twitter, or X, Jake the Pundit, one on TikTok, and a bunch yeah. of different ways, including sometimes movies. Excellent. All right, Jeremy, go ahead and put it out there. Well, you can find my writings on the SouthFloridaTribune.com underneath the Motor City Tribune heading, where you can see Candy's pictures, Scott articles and also our compatriot that comes on some of these shows george eichhorn then you can also find me on the south florida tribune channel on any of these fire up shows and wherever else scott may need me because i blend in wherever i can i'm like a chameleon then you can find me on my channel which is kneecap biting with the motor city lions which has been picked up by the facebook group the villain squad network which is now over forty four thousand strong for lions fans uh you can also find me on Smoking Jeremy B1 on Insta, Smoking Jeremy B Jeremy on Twitter, and you can also find me at Jeremy Bullrick on LinkedIn. I'll tell you one thing, Jeremy. I want to thank you very much for helping us on social media. You and Jake, and Chris. I'm going to say one thing about both you two guys, and I really say this because I know it in my mind. I've been around a lot of young broadcasters, young and old. And the thing that I'm proud about you two, Jeremy and Jacob, is you're two of the most coachable people I've ever worked with in over 40 years in this industry. You guys have a long way to go, but you've come a long way. Keep up the good work, both of you. 
as far as I'm concerned, your better days are ahead of you. They really are. And it's uh, great that we have an opportunity on Super Bowl Sunday to work with a super crew that I have between you, Jeremy, Candy, and Jacob. And for me to be a part of the show with you guys today, it's been a lot of fun. You never know when we'll see this combination again. Depends on how many chicken wings I've had and how much caffeine. But, boy, it's been a whole lot of fun today. Unquestionably the biggest sporting event day of the year. So, so on behalf of Candy Ebling, Jacob Christer, Jeremy Balrick, my name is Scott Morgan, Roth, the Motor City Man Mouth. Thank you for joining us on the Fire Up Bowl edition. And we will catch you during the week with all of our program. Good night and good day, everybody. Have a wonderful Super Bowl Sunday. Yep. Thank you.